Welcome to Insert Controller here, the channel that's all about engineering new ways to play video games. I'm so excited today to be able to show off my latest project, this full-size replica Lancer motion controller for playing Gears of War. I mean, look at how absolutely insane this controller is. I can barely even fit it on screen. The Amazon listing says this thing weighs over 10 pounds. So in this video, I'm going to show off how the controller works, and then in the near future, I'll be live streaming the full campaign here on YouTube. I'll also include some timestamps down in the description for those who just want to skip ahead to the gameplay. You can actually find an older progress build video on my channel. But you know what? It turns out that Lancer wasn't good enough. And for the special edition of Gears of War 5, they released a life-size replica of the Crimson Lancer MK3. So a good friend of mine purchased this Lancer specifically for this project. And while it looks like total overkill, it absolutely took this project to the next level. Speaking of which, I'd like to give a shout out to all the supporters of this project. I do have both Patreon and YouTube channel memberships available for those that would like to support my projects and get some perks in return. Links will be provided down in the description below. The last thing I want to quick mention before I get into the Lancer controller is that I will be live streaming the entirety of the Gears of War 5 campaign with a friend. So if you're interested in checking that out, make sure to subscribe and turn on channel notifications so you know when I'm live. I'll also make a post for a stream schedule shortly. Now let's take a closer look of the internals of the Lancer controller. And here's what the inside of the Lancer looks like. And uh, good lord, this project is a rat's nest of wiring. Now, I unfortunately don't have footage of the entire build process because this project took place over several months, but for future projects, I do intend to show off a lot more of how the projects are constructed. So down here, we have the microcontroller, which is the entire brains of the Lancer controller project. It takes the inputs from all of the different components and converts them into mouse and keyboard commands that get relayed to the PC. Back here, we have the MPU 6050. It's a combination gyroscope and accelerometer. It tracks the motion of the Lancer and is what controls the motion aiming. The microcontroller uses the motion data from this sensor to control the mouse. There was already a trigger built into the existing replica Lancer, so I just spliced the wire from the tack switch onto my microcontroller. And then I added four additional buttons to the front handguard and three to the rear handle that give me features like reloading, switching weapons, and getting into cover. And then finally, by far, my favorite feature on the Lancer is the pull chainsaw. You can't see it because it's behind this black plastic guard. Uh, but there's a lever that you pull and it activates the chainsaw in game. It's super cool. The overall cost for the electronics to modify a toy like this is pretty inexpensive if you're interested in learning. Uh, probably a little over $10 was spent on the materials themselves. So if you want to learn, check out our Discord server. I'll link it down in the description below, as well as a free guide I wrote to kind of get you introduced to Arduino if this is something you'd like to learn. Now that you've seen the internals of the controller, let's talk a little bit more about how you use it. First and foremost, the Lancer controller is based on motion controls. You simply point the Lancer in the direction you want to shoot. I've also added a button that disables the motion aiming while held. Here's a demonstration of the motion aiming in action. feature I'm going to show off is the aiming. Uh, you just move the gun around to look around, full motion controls. I also have a button on the handle that stops it, similar to lifting up your mouse. Uh, it's useful for turning around or sometimes if I'm looking down a lot, I'll get kind of stuck and then I can use this button to, to look back up and kind of reorient myself. That's probably the biggest con with, with a FPS style motion controller is the turning. To shoot in game, you simply pull the trigger. There are four buttons by my right thumb for movement. And just similar to WSAD, move around pretty simply. For the most part, I only push forward and then look around. It's a lot easier to move around this way than to try to navigate between pushing the buttons. Uh, but when it comes to getting in and out of cover, the side buttons are more useful. The front button on my right hand lets you aim down sight. <laughs> Stall neutralized. Return. 
The second button switches weapons. One of the complaints I have about this game is that there is no button to cycle through weapons. You either have to press 1, 2, 3, 4 for whatever weapon you want to equip. So I actually had to program the controller to keep track of which weapon you currently have equipped. So that way it can just cycle through them every time you press the button. The third button is for interacting with objects in game as well as picking up weapons. The last button is for melee attacks and execution. <laughs> The middle button on the handle is for running, diving, and getting into cover. As you can see from the gameplay, the combination of motion aiming and this movement mechanic is super smooth and I'm able to navigate across the map with ease. And the last button on the handle is for reloading. I have no problem achieving active reloads with this setup. Got him. And finally, to activate the chainsaw, you simply pull the lever on the Lancer just like in the game. This is by far my favorite feature of the controller, and it puts a smile on my face every time I successfully land a Lancer kill. Now I'm not going to say that this project is perfect. I have had some misfires since the chainsaw is the exact same button you use to reload. Instead of pressing it, you hold it to use the chainsaw. So sometimes when I push the lever too quickly, I end up accidentally reloading in the middle of combat. That's going to do it for today's episode. Again, another reminder that I'm going to be live streaming the full Gears of War 5 campaign in the near future. So make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when I'm live. I'll also post a streaming schedule soon. As always, if you have any controller ideas you'd like to see, leave me a comment down below. Thanks for watching.